to get Carol Brooks because this room is, I'm hearing from a lot of people across the Thank pond. You very they say Carol Brooks might come in overweight and lose his belt for the skill. Have you heard that and what's your thought? I don't know. You say, you say what again? He might come in and lose his uh, belt on the skill, like come over what? I've been hearing rumors of that. Oh, I mean, I I don't know, I mean, he probably got better source than me. I haven't been talking to anybody, but if he does, I mean, I'll take some of that check. But, I mean, I'll still fight if he comes in no way to anyway. It don't matter. So, uh, what do you feel? Like I say, you're going over there against 30,000 people. Everybody against you. This is, a, you know, a hostile crowd. Is it in your mind that you have to go over here and knock this dude out? Even if you don't, is it in your mind you have to knock him out to get the victory? Oh, no, it's not in my mind. No. If the knockout comes, it comes. We're going to let it flow. I mean, you know, the whole side we set up for the knockout. So, if it comes and the opportunity presents itself, then we'll go, we'll take the knockout. But, if you don't, and you got a box, you got to you know, move, you got to go to the decision, and that just so happens, and that's what it is. We go to the decision, but if I can get the knockout, I try to get it. Are, are you worried just about how the decision that we seen this previous weekend with Gabriel Rosado and Martin Murray, if it do go to the decision, that they will rob you if you clearly beat this guy? I'm not worried at all, man. That's out of my hands. That's out of my control. I mean, at the end of the day, the fans know who won. Everybody watch the fight, they know who won. You know, that's out of my hands if the judge decide to do what they want to do. You know, I would hope that they, they wouldn't do that. I didn't see the, the fight, it was out of fight. So I would hope that, you know, they have fair judges out there. But it is what it is, man. I can't do nothing about it. It's too hey, crazy. What do you think about being the favorite over there in the UK? What do you think about being the favorite over the being um, categorized the favorite of Brooks and yourself? Uh, I mean, it's good. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I'm sure a lot of a lot of guys are set because they wanted to bet on me. You know they wanted me to be the underdog, but uh, you know it is what it is. I'm the favorite, but I still got to go out there and, and do what I have to do. You know that doesn't change anything in my game plan or you know how I'm gonna go about the fight. So I mean it's good that people think think of me and you know rate me that highly. Like this being an international fight, US, everybody looking at the USA versus the UK. Um, people are talking about when you wear the flag, the color flag from your trunks. Anything on that? Um, I'm wearing white and gold, but uh. You know, I don't think it's the USA versus UK thing. It's me versus Kel Brook. You know, I got fans in the UK. You know, he got fans up here in America, as you can see. So it's, it's you know, it's me versus him. You know, I'm hoping to get a lot of UK fans off this victory. You know, and, and bring some of his fans, you know, to my fan base. So you know, just like he's willing to bring some of his my fans to his fan base. So it's not the UK versus the USA thing. It's, it's me versus him. You know, it's not the MCs no more. No, but you're not. Being a champion, yeah, which is a fact, uh, but you being the biggest and most talked about well to me out there. When you go over here and win this belt versus Kel Brook, will it be problems if you demand that Keith Thurman fight next and don't get it? You said, would it be problems? Will it be problems with your management company? If you do, with you being the most talked about, are there any well to wait in the division? Will you have a problem if they don't give you that fight next after Brook? Um, I mean, if they don't, it won't be no problem. If they won't give it if they won't give it next. I mean, if they say, okay, well, Keith Thurman fighting somebody, uh, his mandatory or something like that, you gotta you can fight at home. And I'll take that fight at home, but if I'm guaranteed to fight him after that, then you know I'll take that. But you know, it has to be, you know, I'm fighting him sooner or later. I'm fighting him either the next fight or the next fight after that. But I don't mind fighting at home in Dallas, defending my belt after me winning, you know, let's give my hometown fans, you know, something. And then fighting and then fighting Keith Thurman after that. So you know, it has to be something like that, but I'm gonna get that fight with Keith Thurman. Uh, it's gonna happen. When we talk, when we talk about you, uh, our our radio show, IOTBA Radio, nobody, everybody recognizes, or most people recognize that there's no competition for you at welterweight or 154. They bring up Canelo, they bring up Golovkin to I mean, the conversation. How does that? What do you think about that? I mean, that's, I would say that that's disrespectful, you know, to say there is no competition at 147 and 154. There's a lot of great talent out there, a lot of great fighters out there. Keith Thurman can fight Sean Porter. Danny Garcia, 
you know, all these guys can fight, you know, and all these guys are on competition, you know, especially at 154, you got a lot of competition at 154, so, you know, I, I wouldn't disrespect any fighter like that, especially the top level fighters, the elite fighters, and say that there's no competition at 147 and 154. It's definitely a lot, of, a lot of dog work at 147 and 154. We, we do understand this competition, now. it's just that they have you the overwhelmingly favorite yeah. to beat any one of them guys from 147. Yeah. So one fit, that's a fact. That's yeah. what they say every day. That's I mean, but in, in my mind, you know, I don't, I don't think like that. And that's why I train so hard. And that's why I stay focused. And that's why I do what I do, you know, inside and outside the ring. Because I know, you know, this is boxing. You know, you got guys that, you know, a thousand and one favorite in the blues. You got guys that, you know, beating a lot of top top pros and top prospects. You know, and had no business. You be like, man, he ain't got no business being in the ring with him. Next thing you know, he beating his ass all over the ring. So I mean, my job, I stay focused. I say everybody's top competition. Anybody can give me work at any time. So I'm not worried about you know that guy's not in the competition because everybody competition. You know, you say somebody not competition, then they competition. Once you get in the ring and ain't well or not. So I got one more question. Have you heard, you know, you got a lot of you know, ignorant fans saying Earl Spence is the next Jeff Lacey. Have you heard that? Man, I never really watched Jeff Lacey fight like that, but Jeff Lacey only has a, a left hook. Like, Jeff Lacey was... Man, I'm not gonna disrespect say he wasn't a great. He well, he wasn't a great fighter. I mean, Jeff Lacey was good, but I mean, he really didn't have that many skills at all. So uh, you can't compare my skills and my talents to Jeff, to Jeff Lacey. Yeah. Hey, EJ, real quick, um, Derek says you fight like you train like you have nothing. Yeah. Is is that is that your mentality? It definitely, man. I don't have nothing. I mean, you look at Floyd and, you know, Manny Pacquiao and a lot of these guys making 20 million a fight and stuff like that. Canelo, you know, these guys making 15 million a fight. You know, compared to them, I don't have nothing. So, you know, and I'm not at the top yet at all. And uh, once I get to the top, you know, I want to get to those, you know, Floyd numbers and, you know, Canelo and Manny Pacquiao numbers. And I want to be at the top of the mountain. So, you know, I, you know, I consider myself not having anything, you know. I said, you know, I'm healthy, so that's that's why I'm blessed with great health, and my family's blessed with great health. But you know, as far as boxing wise, you know, I don't have nothing. I know you've been dreaming for this shot for a long time. I asked you the day after they finally announced it. You said it was just another day. Yep. Um, but when you when you go to bed at night and you're you're thinking about your future, um, do, does it just excite you what you have in front of you? Not only Kel, you know hopefully winning the title, but then fighting a Canelo at a Cowboy Stadium and, and things like that. Does that what gets you going? Yeah, man, yeah, yeah. I like to fight uh, Canelo at the Cowboy Stadium. You know, that's, that, that'll be huge, you know. That'll be a huge event. And, um, you know, that's something I would like to do in the future. You know, you know, it definitely gets me going, but it's not something I think about. You know, right now, you know, my dream is winning the IBF belt and beat Kevin Brook. And then eventually going on fighting these other great fighters. But, you know, that's what real fighters are about, man. Fighting the, fighting the best fighters in the division, fighting the best fighters that's out there. And that's what I plan on doing. You talked about, you know, at this point you really haven't had the leverage, right? Thurman's had the belts. You know, he could say what he wants. He's the champion. Do you feel like that leverage will change once you bring a belt back where now you, you are the champion? you can get start to get the fights you've been craving yeah, you think man. things will speed up for you oh definitely man you know uh you know, you know, life come around the circle, man. You know, like I said, tables do turn, man. It's gonna be a time that a lot of guys that you know that awarded me, you know, a lot of these, you know, you know, fighters on their way out, you know, great records that didn't want to fight me, and uh, you know, once I become that name and have built, you know, they'll be knocking at the door. Oh, I want to fight him. Oh, I want to fight Real Spit. And I'm looking at him. I'm telling him, Nah, you didn't want to fight me. You know, when I was trying to come here, oh, y'all made me wait. So y'all. I sit there, I'm gonna fight this champion, I'm gonna fight this number one contender, I'm gonna fight, the, you know what I'm talking about. So you have that chip, you have that chip on your shoulder. 
Uh, uh, definitely, because you know a lot of these, you know, guys, you know, been avoiding me. A lot of these, you know, prospects and stuff like that, you know, had a chance to fight. But, you know, they didn't fight me, and I, you know, I never got an opportunity. You know, a lot of people say, oh, he hasn't proved himself. He haven't did this. He haven't did that. But a lot of these guys, you know, we had a list of names from, you know, one to ten. You know, they give me names. Uh, yeah, I fight him, and I just name him all the way up. Like, can't get him. I get get him. Get him. You know, and none of them want to fight me. Or this guy come out. Or he's injured. He can't fight right now. Something that happened to him. So you know, you know I said tables do turn. And um, when I'm that top name, a lot of my old guys was already established. They gonna want to fight me. And, you know, and they might have a hard time getting that fight with me. I know you. You told me once that you felt like you were ready three or four fights ago, which is probably a couple of years. Do you feel though just more time? You know, now bringing Charlo in and just more. You know, perfecting your craft. Is, is there a blessing in disguise in that? That you feel even better than? Yeah, I mean, yeah. More, I mean, more times, more time gets you, you know, more hunger, more focused, watching all these fighters, you know, getting on these big networks, and you know, they fighting the top guys with top names, and you know, proving themselves and winning belts and stuff like that. So, definitely makes you hungrier, make you more grittier, and um, you know, give you that edge and that chip on your shoulder. So, you know, um, you know, I'm definitely once I get that belt, you know, it's go time, man. And you, then are you hoping if all goes right, you'll fight again by the end of the year? Oh, definitely. I'm definitely fighting again before this year's over with. Um, you know, like I said, it's the last time I'm not waiting this long for, for a fight, for an opportunity. You know, it's the last time I'm not waiting this long. Hey, we, we all know you making the most noise at the welterweight division. Some fighters are giving you the praise, but some other, like Boo Boo and Brother, a few weeks ago, came in the U and something because you just keep posting people quick. They came on something, I get tested by your side and body. As soon as I signed it, they came the next day and test me. And sometimes they come two days in a row and and and, and, with, and take my blood two days in a row. I got a key pin, come in the morning pin, they taking my pin.